Uh, joining us live right now is Dr. Joe Congeni with Akron Children's Hospital Sports Medicine Center. And Joe, good morning. What do you have for us today? Hey, Ray. How you doing today? I'm doing great, my <clears throat> friend. Good. Um, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the return to training, which is the first step for return to play. Everything these days, a lot of things are in phased steps. And just trying to explain a little bit from our standpoint what some of this phasing in of training, which started last week. We're already about a week into it, and I'm beginning to see some kids and talk to our trainers out in the field to see how it's going. You know, we're in phase one. Phase one is 14 days. Um, as long as there's no change in the trajectory or spiking, then after 14 days we'd move into phase two and phase three. So I just wanted to ch touch on those a little bit. In phase one, everybody's a little different. So I have in front of me here, of our 30 high schools or so that we cover, uh, there is guidelines from the National Federation of High Schools, the OHSAA, and then a lot of schools kind of did a one- or two-pager on their own, kind of using what their own <clears throat> facilities and so forth uh, and some of the adjustments they made on their own program. Um, you know, one of the real keys in Phase 1 in all the phases is going to be the screening, the temperature checks, the screening questions, and uh, making sure to be look out, on the on the lookout for uh, infection for sure. And so, as you're talking about pro teams and you're talking about major college teams, the uh, they're recommending that there be a full time uh, infection control specialist or infectious disease specialist at the facility every day full time. Well, we don't have that ability in high school. So, guess who uses that job? So that's a tough job for a coach who's out there coaching and to be also looking at, hey, making sure all these things are happening. So the people doing that job are, in our world, on our team, are our athletic trainers. So we had 30 athletic trainers that for about three months, they were doing screening in the front, uh, front doors to our hospital. They now have moved back into the high school setting and they're doing a lot of the screening. They're doing a lot of answering questions about masking, uh, temperature checks, screening questions, making sure that we stick with some of the guidelines, like in Phase 1, no more than 10 people at a time together. They're calling them pods, so there's 10 people together, 10 inside, 10 outside with social distancing. That goes on for about another week. If there's no spikes or other problems, then our trainers continue to oversee this. We move into phase two. And in phase two, there's the opportunity to have 50 people in an outside situation, uh, 10 people still on the inside. Uh, <clears throat> in phase one, no use of locker rooms uh, or meeting rooms. But in phase two, if all's going well, uh, with social distancing, we're able to move back in the locker room and into the meeting rooms. And then some of the lower risk sports can resume full practice in phase two. And there's a lot more use of, mach uh, of weight machines in phase two, back to the squat machines and the bench presses and the other things. Phase one is a lot of resistance training to get these kids back into it. And uh, I'm telling the coaches, the strength coaches, try to make sure that you're looking out for the lowest common denominator. And what I mean by that is, some people in this three-month period have been working a lot on their own, but some people haven't had the opportunity to do anything. And so, really, you got to approach it from the people that haven't been able to do anything. This is going to be an odd year, and so you can't start out the way you normally do in June, uh, assuming these kids are well into their training program. We have to start at ground zero, what I call the lowest common denominator, and that's in phase two. And then in phase three, this is the big question mark, Ray. It's another 14 days in phase two. Then we move into phase three. And the way it's listed for the OHSAA, moderate risk sports with modified practices, and then modified practices, or I'm sorry, moderate risk sports can go to full practice, and the uh, higher risk sports have mod, uh, modified practice in that phase three. So by then we're talking about mid-July, and we're talking about a sport like football, and of course there is no phase four yet. We're not sure 
Does that mean then the next step is going to be full practice for a sport like football? That's what everybody's asking right now. But those are the three phases which would take us about midway into July, barring that there be any uh, problems in the next few weeks. Joe, a lot of these baseball and softball teams are picking up here in the in the last week and a half or so. As a matter of fact, tournaments are on the schedule. I saw some in Youngstown last weekend, tournaments all yep. over the place this week. As a medical professional, you concerned with these kids jumping right in after having a lot of this time off. They're not professionals, so they probably didn't have the routine of jumping in and throwing 40 to 50 pitchers or whatever that pitch count may be. Yeah, honestly, I am a little bit concerned about that, Ray. I do have to admit, because we don't have the structure of something like the OHSAA in the high school setting, when we're looking at our club teams and softball and baseball, we're looking at them making some decisions on their own, not having the opportunity of kind of having a phased-in practice schedule. And without the phased-in practice schedule, I'm concerned. So overall, those sports are listed, and, and that's in phase two, as low-risk sports, baseball and not a lot of contact, and softball and those. But the fact is that's low risk from the standpoint of infection uh, control. It's not low risk from the standpoint of actually playing a sport that you've not played. You're well aware of that. And so, yes, overall, now you go back to us wearing our musculoskeletal hat. I'm worried about injuries to shoulders and backs and knees and things like that. So our medical team is really stressed here a little bit. We're going to be wearing our musculoskeletal hat, trying to make good recommendations about the bones and joints. We're going to be wearing, you know, our hat about looking out still for uh, the major issue of concussion. And now we have a new thing on our plate, and that is we're going to be playing the role of infection control specialist, trying to make sure all these guidelines in the high school are, are uh, you know, are taking place. And the fact of the matter is there's just no structure for that in the club setting. So to be honest, I'm more worried jumping back to the musculoskeletal, the bones and joints world of baseball, softball, and the lower risk sport. Lower risk for infection, not lower risk for injury. Good stuff. So that's a really good point. One more point Ray, I wanted to make is that a lot of the schools have also written into their protocols And this is really good stuff. Uh, Children's has put together, uh, Children's Hospital, six YouTube videos that are about two and a half minutes long on how to avoid cross-contamination, how to do uh, social distancing, hand washing, how to properly use a mask, and even question and answer about coronavirus. And a lot of our trainers are making the athletes sit down, watch these things daily, a different one each day. But you go to YouTube, Akron Children's Hospital, they did a really nice job putting together some how-tos on a few of these things related to infection control. So we're wearing a new hat this year. We're in June right now. We're going to follow this thing on into July. uh, And so far, so good from all that I'm hearing uh, out there in the field at the OHSAA and the high school level. But we, you know, we'll keep you updated. Thank you, Joe. Excellent stuff this morning. Thank you again, as always, for the time, my friend. Okay, have a great week, Ray. You, You too. Dr. Joe Congeni. Akron Children's Hospital with us at WAKR.